Hello, welcome to Two Bros. I'm going to show you how you can make a Faraday cage to protect sensitive electronic equipment from electromagnetic pulse or a coronal mass ejection from the sun. What happens when you have a wave propagated from a nuclear blast up, say, 25 miles above ground or a X-class solar flare or coronal mass ejection from the sun creates a wave of high energy matter that when it hits our ionosphere frees up electrons and it creates like lightning if you will and this this wave will hit any kind of conducting material and the smaller it is, like microcircuitry in integrated circuits and transistors and things like that, will just get fried from the intense energy that would come from this. So, what you can do is you can put sensitive equipment that you want to protect from such an event inside of a, it's called a Faraday cage or Faraday shield. What it is is basically it's a conductive metal cage or encasement around what it, whatever you're trying to protect. And that has to be grounded. It has to be grounded to earth. So when the wave comes in, it's going to hit this conductive material and it's going to go down this wire to ground. And what I did is I got this steel garbage container. You can get different sizes of these. And I got a steel bolt with a couple nuts, a wing nut on top. And I got some braided copper wire and these crimp on ring terminal on one end. And then I got a regular uh, electrical plug and I connected this just to the ground lug. There's nothing connected to the other blades, just the ground lug. So you can plug this into any receptacle that has a proper ground and it'll use the wiring system's ground, which is grounded then to usually ground rod outside near the meter where the service comes into the building. So again, this is completely encased in metal and any any EMP or or wave like that would hit this metal it would go down this wire and into the ground uh, wire in the wiring system to the ground rod and then ground it out and protect whatever's inside. Now inside you have to create a lining of a non-conductive material. Um, I'm using cardboard, so it creates a little barrier so that this wave doesn't get uh, conducted through to whatever's inside. So basically, you just take this off, and you can see I've got cardboard inside here, and then I've got a cardboard bottom, and I've got cardboard um, surrounding these radios. I got my scanner, trunking scanner. You can hear what's going on, hopefully. Shortwave receiver, multiband receiver. And I also have this Grundig multiband radio. Works on 12 volt, which uh, could come in handy if, if there's people able to uh, transmit signals out. Uh, only people that have protected their or hardened their equipment would be able to use it after an event like this. And this includes automobiles uh, made after about 1980 that have microprocessor circuitry in them, the uh, electronic control module, ECM. So about 80, 1980 or after, none of those cars, which is about 98% of all the cars on the road, wouldn't run. Your cell phones wouldn't work. The power grid would go down because the computers that control the power grid and the grid itself would act like a huge antenna 
it would catch this energy and it would just flow through the wires on the grid and it would blow out transformers all over the country. This would happen all over the world. I have a solar battery charger that could come in handy if you needed to have some kind of electricity because the grid was down. So I want to protect the circuitry in this as well. But it's only micro circuitry, like in integrated circuits, in um, transistors, electronic watches, all that would, would fry. So you have to protect anything like that that you would want to use after an event like this. Put it inside, make sure it's not touching the outside at all. You close it so it's making an electrical connection all the way around it. And then you plug this into a grounded receptacle and you should be protected.